So up next, we've got the movies and TV shows that I watched at home for the month of March. And most of these are new. I think just the one at the end, Atomic Blonde, is one that I rewatched. So this is kind of my take uh, across the board, whether or not I recommend them. Again, I do this just to kind of share the type of content that I watch and what I like. But I also like to hear, you know, what have you been watching at home? above and beyond you know what you saw in theaters and uh, i just like you know talking about it and sharing because i think it speaks a lot to the sort of content that we we watch and it's just a good way to get recommendations and find new things that you might otherwise miss so first up we have clueless i think i just watched this uh with a friend just uh the it was kind of a lazy friday night and i think we we caught it on i think it was pluto tv but this was this was fun enough. I can kind of see why it stands as a film in pop culture. But for me, it was just fine. I don't. It was enjoyable enough, but I wouldn't quite put it at the level of good, uh, even though it was really easy to to sit through. And yeah, I would say just a, a pleasant film. Next up, Pinocchio. I was I had very high expectations for this film, and I was quite disappointed. I am. I think the film is very well done for what it's going for. I think technically, like, the craftsmanship and the artistry that we see in this film is, yeah, I think that aspect of it is worthy of winning Best Animated Feature at the Oscars, which it did. I, however, this was by far not my favorite animated film of the year. I personally did not like this film. I found it very hard to watch and like I found Pinocchio very annoying and when you for me if I find the main character to be annoying it's it's really hard for me to like the film so my personal enjoyment of it uh, I'm kind of between fine and bad uh, between a C and a and a D I I just I did not like this movie it was it was very hard to sit through and anything that's that hard to sit through I unfortunately have to give a bad so this was a D for me I did not yeah I well eh. okay we won't we won't go bad there were it did enough interesting things I I can't say that's a bad film it was just not one for me so I don't recommend it I don't say stay away from this I know plenty of people really like it it was just fine for me it did I think looking back on it the negatives stand out there were definitely some positives there though I liked that it kind of explored Pinocchio from a different point of view but at the end of the day Pinocchio was still just very annoying as a character and that wasn't wasn't really enjoyable to watch for me the next one as well is one that I was looking forward to I had seen like it's been a while since it's been out but I hadn't checked it out yet on Netflix and that's all quiet on the western front I saw I got a lot of nominations at the Oscars, and so I actually watched this the night before the Oscars. I wanted to get it in so I could actually kind of be able to, in watching the Oscars, know whether or not I should root for it. And this film was just fine. I, it's it's very nice. I think it's shot very well, the cinematography, but a lot like I don't know. I just don't get why this film is as like acclaimed as it is i thought it was just fine i actually was pretty bored with it and I ended up watching it at like one and a half speed the second half of the film because i was that was on yeah the day before the oscars but i was binging through the last of us and i'm like okay this is pretty boring i want to get back to the last of us but i want to at least see the whole film so i can say i saw it so i just turned the speed on netflix up to 1.5 and finished the second half of the film that way and i don't think i missed much of anything so I personally didn't really care for this film a whole lot. Again, I think there's a lot of craftsmanship and just there's a lot of good work that went into this film. It's just not one that I enjoyed. I'm still baffled, though, at some of some of the awards it won. Uh, I, I really, yeah, some of the awards, was, it was in the same category nominated as Everything Everywhere All at Once. And i don't know i i would have liked to see those go to everything everywhere all at once but hey i'm if other people are enjoying this movie more than me uh i'm i'm happy like i if i'm at the bottom of the list of like how much i enjoyed it and everyone else enjoys it more that means ever there's more enjoyment in the world so i can't really complain there 
The White Lotus. This is season two that I watched. I watched season one a while back. Uh, this is a good show. I don't think it quite gets to the level of great. I think it is really well done, but it's... I think I... Yeah, I, I would need... It's like a little weird of a show, just kind of... I don't know. It's 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 a little random and it's not quite like my entirely my show. And especially like looking at other shows that I put in the great category, it's maybe just a hair under there. I think it is towards the top of the good tier though. I thought about putting it in great, but it's not one that I would say is a must see. It's one that I would say watch if you're looking for something to watch. But but yeah, I don't I don't think it quite gets to the level of great. But I think it it does a good job and I respect kind of all the the awards that it has gotten. And then next up we have The Last of Us. This is a yeah, this show has been so hot as uh, as I imagine it. Everybody's been watching it. I waited to binge it. I started it the day before the finale release, so I binged it all the first uh, I think eight episodes on Saturday, and then the finale was Sunday, and I watched the finale after the Oscars. So it was really fun to binge this. I have played the video game, so I was very familiar with the story overall, which they, I mean, if you don't want to know anything, like whether or not they, like how much they take liberties compared to the game, may, I would say come back and watch this later. I'm not going to get into specifics, only talking vaguely and comparing it to the game if it's similar or not. So, I, since the main story is very, very similar to the game, I had already experienced that, so I didn't get the novelty of experiencing the story through the TV show as many people did watching the show. Like, this was their first exposure to the, the, the story, so I think that helped them enjoy the show a lot more. And so I... Yeah, I liked it, but I didn't have as good of an experience as I think a lot of other people did. I do really like the changes that they've made from the game and kind of fleshing things out. I, like, yeah, episode three was really good, and I'm trying to think of others. But those aspects I really liked seeing, and overall I think this is a great show. I just, part of me is a little bummed that I couldn't have experienced it for the first time through the medium of the of tv but it was really good to experience it though uh in the game so i'm excited for them to maybe eventually get to a point where they're creating new the last of us stories that are for the show that they haven't gotten to in the game series yet but highly recommend it if you haven't watched the last of us definitely go check it out it's a phenomenal show and then lastly we have atomic blonde i'm kind of struggling with this one i had watched it before, but I kind of had forgotten it, so I was re-watching it with a couple friends, and I had remembered it being better, I guess. Like, I had thought it was maybe in the B or A tier, but now I'm kind of between C and B. I'm not really sure where to place it. I think visually it's a stunning film, and the cinematography and, like, the lighting is really good, but it's not the most necessarily, like, revolutionary story, but... I don't know, it's maybe just, I think it's a little bit lower scale, or lower profile sort of spy movie, and so it's not like over the top, and uh, yeah, I think it's it's a good film, if you're looking for something to watch, I think it's worth watching, there's, I think there's enough there, but it is just barely on that side, I think there's other B tier movies that I know I like better, but I think it is still better than some of the C tier movies, like thinking to this, um, like, yeah, I, I think it is kind of in the tier above something like Clueless or definitely All Quiet on the Western Front. So that one's in the, yeah, the bottom side of the, the good tier. But, yeah, it was, I think, I feel like when that came out, it felt like it was going to be sort of a uh, Charlize Theron, if I'm, I never know how to say her name properly, but the, like, her, like, playing a sort of John Wick character, and that's kind of what we got, but not, not quite, I think she's a lot more human, and, well, yeah, she's, she's a spy that, you know, can hold her own, but she's not as, I think, John Wick is just on a whole nother level, like, not, like, I think Atomic Blonde's a lot more grounded and realistic of, like, what a spy could actually be, so I think, 
I think that's really cool, though, to, like, John Wick is maybe just a little bit over the top. But visually, though, I think it has a lot of similar flares as John Wick to just be a visually interesting film. And so that was, that's always nice. And I watched it at home on my, my home theater, the 135-inch projector in 4K HDR. So, like, that part of it just enhances the movie experience. I don't think it would be all that enjoyable as, like, an airplane movie, for example. That's what I watched at home, though. I'd love to hear what you've watched at home this last month, or if you've seen any of these, did you, yeah, did you like them? Uh, does it, especially kind of the new and more current things like The Last of Us, is that something you've checked out? Is it something you've been on the fence about and you're kind of waiting to see what people's recommendations are? Let me know in the comments down below.